welcome everyone to my channel called Harvey Kaffer, brought to you by the Dar El Harb Center for Islamic Studies and me, your host, Harvey Kaffer. So however you found this channel, it is my most fervent hope you'll return to learn more about the ideology that attempts to pass itself off as the religion of peace, Islam, and how it affects us folks known in Islam as Kaffers. This episode is more than just inspired by, it's more like uh, stolen from another YouTube educator that I admire again. His name is Dr. David Wood and he makes some of the most imaginative videos on the interweb on the subject of Islam. And although he comes from a totally different perspective than mine, we see eye to eye on many of the ways to approach informing folks on what Islam has to offer us non-Muslims. With that in mind, may I present my cover version of his video about Takiya. Takiya is one of Islam's religiously acceptable forms of deception. It involves lying to protect yourself or to protect the Muslim community. Historically, Takiya has been much more important for Shia Muslims than for Sunni Muslims because Shias have been in the minority much more frequently than Sunnis. And in order to protect themselves from being persecuted or slaughtered by Sunnis, Shias often had to deny that they're Shias. The prevalence of Takiyah among Shias living in Sunni areas has led many Sunnis to conclude that Shias invented Takiyah despite the fact that Takiyah is found in the Quran. For instance, in Surah 16 verse 106 of the Quran, Allah says that his wrath abides on any Muslims who decide to reject Islam, unless the Muslim is forced to reject Islam while inwardly remaining a true believer. The verse reads, Whoever disbelieves in Allah after his belief, except he who is forced to do so and whose heart is still content with the faith, but whoever finds ease in disbelief on them is wrath from Allah. Theirs will be an awful doom. The verse was supposedly revealed after Muhammad's companion, Amir Aben Yasser, cursed Muhammad and praised pagan gods while being tortured. Since Amir only uh, cursed Muhammad because he was being tortured, he was forgiven. So if you're a Muslim that says, I reject Islam, and you mean it, you're in trouble. And that's a whole nother video, folks. But if you're a Muslim and you, you say, I reject Islam, and you don't mean it, that's okay. Some Muslims insist this is all there is to Takiya. It's simply pretending to re renounce your faith in order to protect your, uh, your life. But Takiya also involves pretending to be friendly towards non-Muslims even though you hate them. In Surah 3 verse 28 of the Quran we read, Do not let the believers take non-believers for their friends in preference to believers. Whoever does that has no connection with Allah unless you are guarding yourself against them, taking security. Don't take Kaffirs as friends unless it's to guard yourself against them. Notice this verse has nothing to do with pretending you're not a Muslim. It's about pretending to be friendly when you don't really want to be friendly. Let's read the most respected Muslim commentary in history on this verse, Ibn Kafir on Surah 3 verse 28 of the critical Quran, and it's down here 
in the footnotes and it says Allah prohibited his believing servants from becoming supporters of disbelievers or to take them as comrades with whom they develop friendships rather than believers. Allah warned against such behavior when he said, and whoever does that has no connection with Allah, meaning whoever commits this act that Allah has prohibited, then Allah will discard him. Allah will discard a Muslim who has a Jewish, a Christian, or pagan friend. But we've already seen there is an exception. Ibn Kafir continues, unless you indeed fear a danger from them, meaning except those believers who in some areas or times fear for their safety from disbelievers. In this case, such believers are allowed to show friendship to disbelievers outwardly, but never inwardly. For instance, Al-Bakari reported that Abu Ad Darda said, We smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. Al-Bakari said that Ali Hassan said, Takiya is allowed until the day of resurrection. Abu Ad Darda, one of Muhammad's companions, said, We smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. That's how Muhammad's companions understood Takiya. Why would Muslims need to pretend to be friendly? Because the Quran commands Muslims fight those who do not believe in Allah. Surah 9 verse 29. Fight those non-believers that are near to you and let them find in you hardness. Surah 9 verse 123. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and those who are with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. Surah 48, verse 29. Muslims are commanded to violently subjugate non-Muslims, but sometimes Muslims aren't in a position to subjugate us Kafirs. What are they supposed to do then? Are they supposed to share their plans and say, we're not going to attack you now, but as soon as we get the chance, we're going to conquer your civilization, put your men to death, rape your wives, and enslave your children. Of course not. Countries wouldn't invite them in if they said that. So Allah commands them to pretend to be friendly, giving rise to the Islamic proverb, If you can't cut your enemy's hand, kiss it. Now please don't misunderstand me when I explain what Islam teaches. When I tell you about Islam, I'm not telling you what your Muslim friends believe. So don't think because Islam commands Muslims to violently subjugate Kafirs but to pretend to be friendly when outnumbered, your Muslim friend must be lying to you when they say Islam is a religion of peace. The average Muslim living in the West knows next to nothing about Islam and has been raised with the same values the rest of us were raised with. So when your Muslim friends tell you that Islam is peaceful, they probably believe it. Unfortunately, Islam isn't defined by peaceful Western Muslims. Islam is defined by Allah and Muhammad and Allah and Muhammad say fight the unbelievers unless you can't fight them and if you can't fight them deceive them 
so that they are completely off guard when it's time to fight them. We saw this in the critical Quran, and we saw it in Islam's most respected commentary from the footnotes here in the critical Quran, which included quotations from Bukhari, Islam's most respected collector of Hadith, and two of Muhammad's companions. So, anyone who tells you that Islam doesn't promote this kind of deception either has no clue what he or she is talking about or he or she is practicing Takiya. I hope you enjoyed it and have learned something from the words of uh, David Wood, although I changed non-believer a few times to Kafir and quoted verse and commentary from uh, Robert Spencer's Critical Quran instead of the more traditional translation David uses. I suggest you go out uh, and check out more of his videos to learn uh, just how much you don't know about Islam. And be sure to watch uh, Dr. David Wood with uh, Robert Spencer at 8 p.m. Eastern uh, Wednesdays on Spencer's Jihad Watch channel for uh, this week in Jihad to keep up with the struggle to spread the religion of peace by any means necessary. So check out the other YouTube channels and influencers I have suggested during the new year. And one of the things you'll learn as you study Islam is you're already a Kafir. You might as well be a Warner. Please leave your comments below and remember, no Islam, my fellow Kafirs, so there is no submission. P.S. If you see this, Dr. Wood, I hope you're feeling better real soon and you and yours have a happy new year. Wow.